LeBron breaking yet another record This time the scoring record And I think Adam Silver said it's been around for what, like 40 years right You saw Kareem Kareem was looking sick in the face man He ain't want LeBron to break that record man He, he really didn't it, it reminds me of like the 72 Dolphins Whenever a team like wins like 8-9 games in a row That's when them 72 Dolphins start attending every game And they like cheering for them to lose Because they don't want that record to be broken But anyway Team keep it clean Mark Andrews our own Pro Bowl, Ravens Pro Bowl tight end. Um, he was featured on uh, Pro Football Talk, NFL on NBC. He had an interview uh, this week with Chris Sims and Mike Florio. Um, and he has some interesting things to say. He, he says something that we've all been thinking and a lot of us have been saying for years about the Baltimore Ravens offense, but what's new, right? Uh, even though Mark Andrews, like, He's somebody that I, he can't complain about Ravens offense, man, because he is uh, the featured target, uh, the featured passing target in that offense. And that, that offense got him paid. That offense made him a lot of money, man. And he it allowed him to break several Ravens records and whatnot. So, but shout out to Mark Andrews. But anyway, um, the interview started off with uh, Mark getting his brand promo out the way. Uh, and for his uh, protein company that he's working with called Rockin' Protein. And I was like, hey, I ain't mad at you, Mark. I get it. Mark Andrews said, cut the check. He getting his bread. So I, I love it. But anyway, he said he was feeling good after the season as far as health-wise. Um, but then they got right into it. They jumped, like, straight into it. And I was like, all right, Sims, you getting started right away. I respect it. Uh, he asked Mark if he was kind of surprised that everything happened with Greg Roman and asked where he sees this Ravens offense going. Uh, Mark said that uh, Greg was his tight end coach when he was a rookie. And he said, wherever Greg goes, he's going to be very well off. And, again, you, you saw the success that Mark Andrews had from jump. Mark Andrews came a long way, man. Got to give it to Mark Andrews. Because there's some people when things happen to the starter that's in front of them and they are presented with an opportunity, not everybody makes it. Not everybody makes it happen. Obviously, Mark Andrews was a third-round pick in 2018. Hayden Hurst was one of the first-round picks. We know the other first-round pick, too. We're going to talk about him in a little bit. Uh, but Hayden Hurst was the first pick in, in the Ravens draft that year, and Mark Andrews was a third-rounder. And Hayden Hurst was the starter. And he, he started, but then he got hurt. Insert Mark Andrews, and Mark Andrews never looked back. Never looked back. So shout out to him. Uh, but anyway, um, he said that he doesn't know who the Ravens are going to choose as far as an offensive coordinator, but acknowledge that the Ravens are definitely doing their due diligence, as they definitely have been, because they've been having a lot of interviews, even those secret interviews that they didn't want to tell nobody about. But it's okay. Uh, and Sims asks, what Mark thinks Ravens offense needs? Like, what's the next phase of the Baltimore Ravens offense? And Mark said that this is such a pass-happy league nowadays that if you're not doing it, then you're going to fall behind. Uh, and he said also, um, he, he said that had we've had that, and whoever we choose, Ravens are going to be able to run the ball. Yeah, well, trust me, we know. Um, and he, but he said, but we got to be able to pass the ball at a high rate. That's a dangerous team when we start doing that. And, I mean, that's old news. Uh, this is something that we've been talking about, a lot of us have been talking about for years, man. Ravens got to get with it. You got to get with it. Like, running the ball is great, and you, you, you should be able to run the ball. You want to be able to run the ball, but this is a passing league, and those are the teams, man. Those are the teams that advance the furthest. And you think about it, like, Ravens have obviously mastered running the football. We know they can run the football. We get it. We know it. But they could just be so much more dangerous with a lethal passing game just to complement the, uh, the, the, the run game. And, and it would be great, man. And, we, like, we know Lamar can throw the football. That's old news. We've been knowing that for years. So it's like, what's, what's the issue? What's the problem? I feel like the Ravens got to actually want to throw the ball like that. That's why I remember last year, at the beginning of the year, obviously J.K. out, Gus out, Justice Hill out, all the running backs out. So they picked up the guys off the street. They picked up a, um, uh, I can't remember his name right now off the top of my head. Oh, Devontae Freeman. There we go. Picked up Devontae Freeman, Latavius Murray, uh, then eventually Le Le'Veon Bell too. And that was all right. But Ravens, they became a more pass-heavy pass team. And I liked it. I, I, I liked it. Now, they did deal with injuries literally everywhere. 
Um, but they became a pass-heavy team, and they showed you like, hey, uh, we could really throw that football around. Hey, we could throw if we up. We could throw if we're down. We can come back. They, they show, and but they showed it already. But l- last year they showed it even more. So I'm thinking, all right, this year we ain't got all the injuries. Well, I mean, had a lot of injuries, but we ain't got all the injuries that we had last year. So let, let's get it, baby. Let's make it happen. And it seemed like they started to a bit, but they just didn't put enough into it. Because when one piece fell down, obviously Rashad Baby, when that went down, that was it. That was it. But anyway, um, Florio asked uh, what Mark made of the talk when people say veteran wide receivers don't want to be part of that offense. Uh, he said it's been blamed on Lamar Jackson. It's been blamed on Greg Roman. Uh, and Mark said, I think we got to change that narrative. I think Baltimore should be a spot where guys want to go, and we're going to make it that. See, I really like that answer, too. And I respected that answer because Mark didn't say, well, that's simply not true. Because we know it is true. Like, why receivers don't want to go there? Why, why would they? And why should they? Who's going to want to go there? Ravens ain't going to pay them that much money. Ravens ain't going to feature them, so they ain't going to get too many passes. Why should they want to go there? Why receivers have continued to see receivers go to Baltimore and their careers die? Some of their careers are never alive in the first place. But well, why should receivers want to go there? So I, I, I love that Mark, he didn't deny it. He didn't deny it. He just said, oh, we got to change that narrative. So anyway, um, he was also asked by Sims. Uh, he said, tell people about Lamar's talent throwing the football. He gets put in this box where he's just a running quarterback. And Mark said he can sling the rock, and he puts it where it needs to be. Some of the best footballs he's caught in his life have been from Lamar Jackson. Oh, yeah, I could definitely see that because <laughs> all them footballs that you caught, they got you that bread. So, yeah, I don't blame you for saying that. Um, then Florio asked how hard it was to play without Lamar down the stretch again this season. Uh, Mark Andrews said it was tough. Lamar's my guy. Uh, not having one of your leaders is tough, but look at Tyler Huntley. He was just in a Pro Bowl. Hey, I t- told you, hey, once you got that Pro Bowl on your resume and you played in it, can't nobody tell you nothing. Can't nobody tell you nothing like – no matter what happens from this point forward with Tyler Huntley's career, he can say, I'm a Pro Bowl QB. And I even went off in a Pro Bowl, too. Flag football game and all, but still, hey, he's a Pro Bowler. Can't take it away from him. Uh, and he said, uh, he said Tyler Huntley can sling the ball, too. He said, we're very blessed with two great QBs. I see you, Mark. Uh, he said, I just think different scenario we would have been better off. He slipped that little part in that lesson. And, and obviously he meant that with Lamar Jackson. Uh, it would have been a better game. Um, obviously down the stretch and stuff too. Uh, Sims asks, what's the Lamar effect? Tyler Huntley, great respect for him, but he's not Lamar Jackson. Tell us that extra element he brings on the field and what's his leadership style. And Mark said, whenever you have Lamar on the field, the defense is always worried about eight. He said, that takes pressure off of you. As an offensive player, that takes pressure off of you. When you have a talent like that on the field, that makes your job easier. And that is one of my biggest frustrations. Because it's true. What Mark Andrews said is true. When you have somebody like Lamar, that obviously guys are going to be extra focused on him. What's he going to do? So I, I have just been hoping, like, all right, Ravens, add more talent. It just makes too much sense. Add more talent. Mark Andrews, phenomenal tight end. But at the receiver position, at, let, let, let's add more. Let, 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 let's do more. Let's, let's be better. Because if the Ravens can add more, if they can put more around Lamar, around Mark Andrews, everybody eats. And like Mark Andrews said, it will make your job easier. And it was crazy. It's not even crazy. We've been saying that on here for years, literal years. Better talent would make their jobs easier. Mark Andrews struggled a lot of times this year. A lot of times this year, he was quiet, silent. You didn't hear nothing from him because Ravens didn't have other guys like that to take the pressure off of him. So defenses, again, another year where they could just be like, oh, Mark Andrews, take him out the game. We'll be A-OK. Ravens got to do better, man. But Florio said, Lamar's contract, uh, how much do you pay attention to that? And Mark said, I don't really pay attention to any of that. Anytime you're in a position like Lamar is, his whole career, there's going to be so much pressure. Let Lamar be Lamar. No one knows how he feels. I know if he could have been out there, then he would have been, and as far as the, the stretch of the season. Um, and then Sim said, does it take over conversations in the locker room? 
because uh, Chris Sims talked about how when he was on the Super Bowl Bucks team that um there was some stuff going on with Keyshawn Johnson. He said they talked about it in the locker room, and Mark Andrews said it may. Some guys may ask what's going on, and Mark said it was tough not having him out there, but we were also blessed with Tyler Huntley. So Mark Andrews, shout out to Mark Andrews PR people. Um, they got him right because Sims and Florio, especially Florio, uh, they were trying to throw some bait. They were trying to get it. They were trying to get some good sound bites and whatnot, some good quotes. Mark said, nope, I ain't going for it. But then this part where Florio really tried to get him. Florio said, when Mark Andrews' head hits the pillow at late at night, when you're trying to fall asleep, do you consider, I, I may not have Lamar Jackson as my quarterback next year. Uh, has that entered your brain? And Mark Andrews said, no, I think, he said, no, no, I think Lamar, and then Florio cut him off. He cut him off and said, why hasn't it entered your brain? And Andrew said, Lamar is a raven for life. And he said, both parties want to get the deal done. It's just about doing it. That's it. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. So, again, they were, they were trying to throw bait. This is a, lot, a lot of times throughout this. And, and, and they, did, they did it split. You could tell they're professionals, man. You could tell. Like, they've been doing this for a long time, especially Mike Florio. You could tell. But Mark wasn't biting. Um, and then uh, Florio asked him, do you ever consider, like, is there something I can do to help? And Mark said that I'll give up my paycheck if I have to. But then Sims, which I loved, he said, don't do that. There's enough money to go around. And I said, ooh, you speak in my language now. He said, but Shadi got enough money to take care of y'all. And hey, hey. <laughs> Uh, then they asked him about the Super Bowl, and Mark said he was leaning to, towards the Chiefs. Uh, he said he rooting for his boy, Orlando Brown Jr. So shout out to OBJ. Hope he get his bread this offseason. Uh, and he also said Mahomes has a chip on his shoulder. Um, then they asked him uh, who was the best team that they played all year. Mark brought up the Bengals and the Bills. He said the Bengals, they had our number a bit this year. <laughs> um, yeah, and he said that that's one game that he'll have circled next year. Um, they talked about... Uh, they gave a little shout out to him for his effort on that uh that fumble at the goal line, and they talked about how it's crazy just how one game I mean one play can change uh, the outcome of a game. Um, and he said yeah, and they they gave a shout out to him for his effort on the on the chase down. And Florio was like, oh, do you think do you think that should have been a penalty? And then Mark was like, ah, oh, it it could have been, but he said yeah, it's just 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 crazy, man. That's it. He just minimized it. He was like, ah, oh, whatever. Um, and left it at that. Uh, and then they asked him, who's the freakiest tight end in the league? And they were like, oh, of course, I know. I'm, I'm sure you're going to say yourself and whatnot. They brought up Darren Waller, and, and then Mark was like, oh, yeah, Darren Waller is nice. But then Mark, he said, Isaiah Likely. I said, oh, Mark, for your PR skills are impeccable, impeccable. They are perfect. Great job, Mark. You said all the right things. So shout out to him. Y'all can check that interview out. Uh, on YouTube I should link it down below um, In the description So I can make it easier For y'all to find it But anyway Team Keep It Clean uh, This was it, it was a fun interview To watch super fast It's like 11-12 minutes long So it's quick um, But Yeah man Mark Very consistent uh, With his Words And everything that he had to say um, But Still kept it interesting um, Obviously I know um, Before Like <laughs> And Again, Mark, I, I think he is just the ultimate teammate. He's the ultimate teammate. He's not going to bash anybody. He ain't going to talk bad about anybody. Uh, not going to put on anybody on blast. Because he had an opportunity. Because they've been, when Greg Roman was part of the Ravens, Mark was like, hey, this, we, we got a great offense. We're great at this and that, da 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 100% support, publicly at least. Um, but now that Greg's going, he didn't bash him, which he, he doesn't need to. You know, he didn't need to bash Greg Roman. He ain't no need for that. Um, but again, he didn't take the bait. Uh, and then with the whole Lamar Jackson contract talk, he didn't take the bait either. He could have, but he didn't. He didn't really talk about nothing that's in the locker room. He said, oh, maybe we talk about it a little bit, but ain't nothing crazy. He just downplayed it all. So shout out to Mark Andrews for being uh, the ultimate teammate and the ultimate prep professional and the ultimate uh, interviewer. And shout out to his PR team for being the ultimate staff. We out.